Hello everyone. Today we have with us Dr. Ajit Thomas. Dr. Ajit Thomas is a senior consultant urologist and andrologist from Durgapur. He is having a rich experience of 15 years in the field of urology. He carries out the treatment with utmost efficiency and precision, ensuring that the health of the patient is in a safe hand. So over to you, Dr. Ajit Thomas. Thank you for this generous introduction that you have given me. I graduated from CMC Velour in 2008 and have been a consultant urologist for nearly 15 years now. I've been in Durgapur for last 10 years and uh, currently I work as the head of department of urology in this hospital. Thank you. So I'll start with the questionnaire. So what is World Continence Week? See, World Continence Week is the initiative taken by an organization called International Continence Society. It's a worldwide organization that works to draw attention to uh, this phenomenon of incontinence, which basically is uh, le involuntary leakage of urine, uh, which can be very socially embarrassing and can uh, be very debilitating for the patients. And uh, many times the patients don't uh, seek help or even consult a doctor. They don't even disclose this issue. Uh, they live in, in quite a bit of embarrassment. Uh, so every year, the World Continence Week is celebrated to kind of improve awareness globally so that people can come ahead and take help from responsible bodies or individuals they know that such an uh, such an entity exists and it's not something that is unique to that person. A lot of people do suffer from the uh, phenomenon called incontinence. They leak urine and uh, that can make life difficult for them. So at the end of the end of June, that's the last week of June, is what is uh, called the World Continence Week. And this year it falls from 21st to 27th June. So we are in the midst of the world continence week. Okay. Uh, well, so what is uh, overactive bladder? So uh, overactive bladder is one of the major issues that World uh, Continent Society deals with. And it's a group of urinary symptoms which mainly includes a urgent feeling to pass urine. Uh, having to pass urine very often and sometimes it le leaks causing a lot of social embarrassment to the patient. It often happens before he or she can get to the toilet, wetting the clothes. So what is the major symptom of this overactive bladder? So this is a sudden strong urge to pass urine and you got to go. There is no way you can stop it. Uh, the patient is very, very afraid because she will leak into, she or he will leak into the into her clothes and it can be very uh, debilitating or embarrassing if he or she is in the midst of a social setting. Uh, in fact, the patient may not even get time to get to the bathroom right away. This urge may or may be followed by a leak and when it, it is followed by a leak, it can become very embarrassing. So it's kind of a frequency. And what do you mean by this frequency as a symptom of uh, overactive bladder? See, uh, uh, frequency, uh, 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 in general, a person would be expected to pass urine about eight times a day. Uh, that includes uh, maybe once in a night, but generally not more than one. Uh, if, the, if the patient or somebody is passing urine or have to pass urine more than uh, that, and if it is more than once in the night, then it is called frequency. Uh, who are more prone to have OAV? See, generally, uh, women are at greater risk because their urethra is shorter. It's 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 something that happens in an increased fashion uh, as somebody gets older. Women who are postmenopausal are at a greater risk. Men who have prostate symptoms or senile or senile aging, they can uh, experience these uh, moments of leak. 
people who have experienced uh, stroke or even neurological di diseases like multiple sclerosis are at a higher risk of uh, overactive bladder. Food and drinks can sometimes cause and then precipitate leakage, which I believe can be controlled much more easily. So what causes OAV? Well, see, at the end of the day, bladder is controlled by the brain. And the major problem occurs when uh, the, this control is lost. And the loss of control can happen through many factors. Uh, and this, this control can, uh, loss of control can happen when even when the bladder is in full and the patients end up leaking. So the muscles of the bladder will contract and expel the urine even before you are ready to do so. So these, this sudden control of loss of control can cause expulsion of urine often in settings which are not very appropriate. So how can uh, this OAV affect health and life in general? See, when you have patients who have to get through the day, going to the bathroom many a times, uh, it can lead to fear and embarrassment and patient can actually uh, cancel activities which normally somebody would uh, go through the period of the day. Uh, it can get in the way of patients' work, social life, and many a times even sleep. So, you know, patients may uh, experience embarrassment because they're afraid to being wet in public. And how healthcare professionals diagnose this OAB? See, once the patient has decided to seek, seek help, it becomes easy. Uh, well begun is half done. Uh, the physician would take a complete history, uh, uh, take a detailed uh, history of the patient's activities day to day, uh, whether the patient is having difficulty in sleep, what medicines the patient is taking, how much liquids uh, patient take, uh, and, uh, and even drinks. Uh, alcoholic drinks, which the patient are used to taking. Uh, then the doctor would proceed to do a physical examination, which might be causing symptoms. Uh, in men, you know, the doctor would probably perform a digital rectal examination, which is basically uh, placing the fingers through the anus and examining the prostate gland. Even women, uh, the doctor might be inclined to do the same find out if there is a loss of tone because of any neurological problems. Uh, the doctor might then proceed to ask the patient to keep a bladder record when he or she is getting up to pass urine, what is the frequency, the amount of leak, uh, and then other tests like even ultrasound and a urine examination when it is required. So what are the treatment options for overactive bladder? See, a doctor has a way, a wide range of options, starting from uh, the basic lifestyle changes. You know, if the patient is used to drinking too much of fluids, I think the doctor might uh, be restricting this fluid, especially towards the end of the day. Uh, the other is uh, training the bladder. Like the patient could be uh, made to keep a record when he or she would be uh, likely to pass urine after what amount of drinks and then um, ensure that the patient actually has a timed void so that patient can pass urine even before he or she gets the urge to pass urine. Uh, then there are medications which the doctor can prescribe to relax the bladder so that uh, the patient doesn't or even don't leak. Very often, patient will get some time to go to the toilet and pass urine. And if everything fails, there are some surgical options which the doctor may resort to make life easier for the patient. Okay. Will what do a patient do to reduce the symptoms of uh, overactive bladder? Well, generally, even before the patients uh, seek help, I think one of the first things to do is uh, to have an understanding of what is causing this leak. Is it a disease or is it the lifestyle? 
especially too much coffee, some alcohol, uh, sugary drinks, spicy foods. These are the things which can aggravate uh, what is generally a condition uh, which can be lived through. It makes it much more tolerable if you can avoid these. Losing weight is one of those uh, things that a patient can do even before she, he or she can take out. There are these exercises called Kegels exercises, uh, which patients can Google and find out how exactly it can be done. Uh, carefully managing the intake of fluids, uh, setting up time uh, to pass urine even before the contractions set in, uh, scheduling their bathrooms, keeping a diary which uh, will enable somebody to have a more understanding of uh, the pass patterns of passing urine, and uh, even using incontinent pads, you know, which are available in the market these days. If everything else fails, of course, one can always take uh, physicians who specialize in doing this. Um, at the end, I'll ask you that uh, what should a patient do if he or she thinks that uh, he is having an overactive bladder? See, the best thing that the patient can do is uh, consult a physician, especially a urologist who has an office practice. Sometimes uh, overactive bladder can be a part of a urinary infection. So patient has to be sure that he or she doesn't have a urinary infection, which of course the doctor will check. Any other in, in illness or infection which can cause loss of uh, bladder control is also going to be a part of the workup which the doctor will have to decide uh, whether he or she has it. And then the these professionals will be able to guide these uh, patients what exactly what kind of problems the, uh, the, the he or she is experiencing and go about treating it. And uh, various treatment options are available as I mentioned before. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thomas, for your valuable time. It was quite an uh, informative session for us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great.